Welcome to Carolina Sculpture Studio. My name is Clint Button and I'm a granite sculptor. And welcome to video number 32 of the virtual stone carving apprenticeship. All right, we've been through the preliminaries about compasses and triangles, and now you've got to make a model. Uh, to facilitate this, at, at one point I was going to do a full-size model, just a one-to-one -one and pointing with a pointing machine, and it, it's relatively fast with a pointing machine. Um, but a 5.6 model is a lot of model for one person to handle, and I work alone. I don't have a bunch of assistants and... Uh, and it isn't just that it's a heavy model to handle, um, the weight can be an issue, but because of the dimensions and where this, this figure has an arm that's protruding out, um, you know, I'll put this on the screen of the, the, the little cartoon I did of this angel that I intend to have her laying a rose on top of a, of a die, on top of a memorial. And so I decided I'd go ahead and, and lay it out as a, as a full-size sketch, um, part, in part to, to uh, guide us for uh, the, the sawing work, because you have to supply sawing instructions to the uh, manufacturer who will do the initial dimensioning on the stone for me. And so this, I had to put this together to make sure I had that. But, uh, um, in order to make this a little easier to handle both during the actual project and then afterwards when I'll put it up on the mezzanine to get it out of the way, um, I decided I'll do a two-thirds scale. We did our triangle uh, as to what we're going to need. I'm, I'm going to make a, a model that's two-thirds scale and I, because this is six foot it's very easy to do a four-foot model and be right on the money at two-thirds. One of the reasons the triangles and compass method is so versatile is that you rarely have projects that are identical. You rarely repeat work. So if you have, uh, just in general, something for a full round piece of statuary and plaster, uh, you may sell that job in, I've done the same project where I've got the same model um, to enlarge it from uh, the scale we had to uh, three six and to four foot. We had duplicates on a, on a full round Christ that we did a couple of those and did a couple of Marys as well when I was apprenticing. And so because the triangle can be constructed to meet the need of whatever the project is, you don't have to have an accurate model. The model has to look good, but it doesn't have to be scaled properly because you're enlarging it and you just enlarge it, and it's it's however tall it is, and, and then the, the diameter as far as thickness, width, and depth is, is just what it works out to be. With a bas-relief, it's more complicated. So I went ahead and did the sketch, we did our triangle, and then we worked backwards to figure out what two-thirds of eight was with calipers. And it's very simple. I don't have to round off a decimal point. It's very definitive with a pair of calipers. So, I want to use the actual board in the back we did for the St. Francis that um, there's lots of videos on casting the St. Francis on my channel if you want to check it out. That niche was four foot tall. So, I've got a five foot piece of plywood here. We're going to develop it to mimic this. I'm going to take a few more measurements uh, going forward. I've got, I've got to reinforce the back of this to make sure that this doesn't flex. Uh, because this is a little different layout than the other one. It's not going to have a surround or a perimeter on it like the St. Francis did where it, and it was actually in the niche. So there was a lot of wood on the front reinforcing the plywood. So I'll put a perimeter on the back. I'll just frame it up with some 2 by 4s And then I will make my standoff depth to match both the plinth and this memorial that she's supposed to be putting her hand on. That's going to facilitate this, this model in, in a lot of ways because I don't have a square edge to measure off. But I'll also make a, at least one or two other things to mount on the side as I need to to check my height to make sure that my clay is foreshortened in the proper ratio to enlarge it so I'll end up at 8 inches. So I won't bore you with uh, 
table saws and screwing lumber and everything. We're going to let the magic of video take care of some of that and uh, we'll be back. But this is preparing the, the, to set the model up so we can start doing it. The, the only complicated part with this model really will be uh, doing something for an armature to block her up. Um, when you get into large figures like this, especially in, in bas relief, you want to have some of the, the, the rotation, the contrapostal, you want to have her legs move, you want to have her arms and her torso rotated. And you'll try to put blocking in the clay in order to extend the clay. Well, the blocking has to be there, but it has to be out of the way because a lot of the way you get your, your good definition of detail in these models is because they're very deep. When, and one of my favorite examples, when, and I'll maybe, I don't know, maybe I can find some pictures of these. When my sculptor did a Nakahomo, the head of Christ, he did the rotation and he had a lot of volume in it. Um, and it was very, it looked great. When Dario did one, and I didn't know Dario until he retired, um, and, and I, you know, I bought his tools as he retired and everything. Um, when I started studying his work, um, he did his Ekahomos and he exaggerated some of the depths to where the head was rotated like Gary's was, but the corner of the eye was almost at the back of the niche and it was a lot more depth. And it made it, it made it demonstrate out in the harsh light of the cemetery really, really well. You could see it a long ways off. It really stood out. And there's subtle nuances like that in your bar relief work with your foreshortening to help compensate for it being a bar relief so that it demonstrates or communicates really well um, from whatever vantage point it needs to. So um, when you're blocking this up, you know, we may have to go in and out with doing our, our blocking, but uh, um, it'll use an immensely smaller amount of clay to do it two thirds scale than full size. And that'll also help with rigging, you know, some armature for her head because her head's gonna be tipped out and everything. So, um, um, but uh, let's see what we can do with the magic of video to get some of this carpentry work done. And then maybe we can start packing clay and wedging clay. Before I go any further, let's show you what I've done with this bat or board uh, to prep it for the clay. Uh, I went through and took a number of dimensions off of my life-size sketch. I know it's hard to see on this plywood, um, but I, I literally put a live model on and traced around it so I had actual dimensions of where an elbow would be and where her hand would reach. She's actually about 5'6", so it's, it's all very, very excellent scale. But I'm gonna make a scaled down model like we've been talking about. So I took a bunch of measurements off of that 2D pattern with the compasses and worked backwards applying it to the triangle in order to you know, install it like this and then figure out what this dimension was on the legs so I could apply it to the, to the model. And I wanted to show you a little bit about the construction of this before I close it up. Uh, I'm gonna make the background just slightly curved so that it's it's like a niche i'm going to add two inches of depth and that'll give me a 10 inch space for a figure to be able to have her head tipped out and have everything up above her shoulders look like it's deeper and that way i can kind of cheat with how far i push her back here in the lower portion because i can make it look like it's deeper still be six inches at the back um, this is the top line here and i'm probably going to cut it down maybe around four inches but on the model I may just leave it I haven't really decided but I'll probably will cut the job down to about four inches and that will help make the wings protrude and the top of her head separate so it looks like especially when viewed uh, from the front standing in front of her she'll be a little bit taller it'll make it look like she's separate from the stone so these are scaled to provide a corrected two inches of height once we enlarge that by two-thirds this is two-thirds of two inches and then I made a couple other standoffs this is our corrected 
die, which is this is what eight inches, two thirds of eight inches is, and uh, everything's being screwed from the back. This will just be down here. I'll probably fill this a little bit on the bottom. And then I'll attach these. This is still a little loose. I'll attach these with screws through this. And then I can just put a, a simple valence piece of plywood on there to close this up like this is the die that she's touching. Um, this is almost exactly the width of the of the board and that's that's at four foot and we're expecting it to be at least four two uh, at least um, four two I'd like four six but that may not be happy we're trying to get at least four two of width so we'll be beyond this amount so as long as the rows lands and is is fits within this dimension we should be fine so uh, I'm gonna screw it together now just wanted to give you a little bit using a lot of salvage lumber that's cut down from previous models this just happens to be a piece of plywood i've got that's pretty hammered but this is just holding space this little gap here really doesn't matter i can put a piece in there but i probably won't um but uh just to close it up while i'm working to help understand and represent what we're doing but once again this is what you can do with the triangles you can in the compass you can use the compass backwards um, take your enlarged measure, your, your full size measurement, find it in the span on the triangle, and then capture this measurement. After you play with it a little bit, you can just shrink your, and it doesn't work. You're not going to do a whole job like that. You'll, you'll go nuts, take forever. Um, but uh, for, for doing a few measurements to put together a corrected model, this works great. So do some more screwing on the, on the background. And uh, got it all finished up, carpentry-wise. So uh, just put a just valence down this crap, fill that in, just fill that just to support it, and uh, same thing here on the end. So I'll have a nice plinth. This scales to four inches here, which will enlarge to six. And the reason I got to be large here with six-inch plinth instead of a four-inch on the job is that this corner may be tender because this is pretty deep. We're gonna to try to have wing support and a drapery, but I can't have a big projection here that's four inches tall, that's up to you know six inches to eight inches deep. That'll just snap right off when they handle it. So make it stronger. But uh, we'll stand this up and I'll start wedging clay. I'll probably bulk this up here in the middle with a piece of plywood and stuff to get it up into this range for the majority of it because this center part there's no need to put a lot of clay here um, but this will allow me to penetrate push it a little bit deeper cove it in with the wings and have it curved to explain the the depth up here to have this top sc scoop um, and uh, start working clay and see how it goes I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. It'd be a little short uh, compared to some of them, but I'm sure there's lots of people who'd rather watch a short video than a long video. Um, start pushing clay on this uh, next thing. And uh, I'll, like I said, I'm going to fill this center portion, probably leave a little bit to this edge. I won't get deep in here, so I could probably bulk this up a lot to save some, save some clay. Um, but, uh, uh, this should make a really nice corrected model and it should be a lot more manageable to cast and to handle once it is cast. I'll have to do a little bit of structural work with an armature inside the plaster to support it and uh, whether I can cast the arm in, in uh, one piece or, and maybe fill it uh, just to make it durable. There's no, I mean having penetrations is nice but to have her arm out there all by itself and cast it. Um, it, it's maybe just as easy to go ahead and cast it with with a heavy back and then it won't get broken off while it's staying around I don't know we'll, we'll see how that goes um, but uh, uh, I did have something weird happen want to mention it real quick um, you should you know be observant like I said uh, I talked to somebody on the phone first of the week a couple days ago and uh, she said she googled me while we we're on the phone and you know liked what she saw and everything and, so I hadn't Googled myself in a while, so I did. I found out I had a, another Carolina Sculpture Studio channel 
with a bunch of my videos on some other platform, except it wasn't me. Um, I was able to get taken down, and uh, thankfully there was no uh, no issues with it in terms of people thinking they were communicating with me when it wasn't me that was that was uh, fronting it. But um, if you've got a website, if you've got video content, you need to Google yourself on a regular basis and see if you can find yourself. And I know I'm not the first person that's had videos uh, pirated or stolen or whatever, but uh, having one video taken and, and put somewhere is one thing. Having your whole channel, your, your avatar, your name, your everything, um, that could lead to a whole different situation. So um, uh, just just be it, be you know be observant, pay attention to what's going on. But um, wrap this video up, and uh, we'll move on to video number 33. But uh, my name's Clint Button here at Carolina Sculpture Studio with the Virtual Stone Carving Apprenticeship, working on a corrected scale model, two-thirds scale model in bar relief uh, that we're going to enlarge to uh, life size uh, with compasses and triangles uh, after the stone gets here. Models done and everything. So appreciate you hanging around. Appreciate you watching the videos. Thanks for coming in.